Hey, hey, what's happening, everybody? Steve Looney back from graphicdesignertips.com. This is episode number two of my new professional logo design series. And what's cool about this series is that these are actual logos that I have designed for clients on my own. So I can actually speak to you about why I did certain things and how we really came about with certain ideas and stuff like that. But this logo design series is really going to focus on specific things that you need to adhere to when designing professional logos. Because my last series was more about fun type of logos that broke all different types of rules. This series is to show you what you really will be doing in the real world. So on the screen right now, you're going to be seeing, we're well, going to see this logo for Cornerstone. I'm going to critique it, then we're going to build it in Adobe Illustrator CC 2014. But first, I just want to let you know that there's an extended version of this video and each video in this series is going to have an extended version. And the extended version really goes into everything. It goes into all the correspondence with the client. It shows you the first drafts, how I set them up, uh, the revisions, and, and, and just all in-depth types of stuff. I'll talk about the project, you know, uh, uh, bumps in the road that I had to go through, or, you know, some projects are smooth sailing. So uh, that's what you're going to get in the extended version. Definitely check it out in the uh, description below the video. Uh, Watch this video first to learn from this and uh, the extended version is going to have a whole ton more stuff. Okay, so let's talk about this logo really quick. Cornerstone. It is a very well-balanced logo, okay? It has a little bit more weight to the left of it, but what's cool about this is that that actual symbol can be taken off and it can be used as a standalone symbol to represent the company. There were a number of versions that we went through uh, where we attempted to make it look like some type of a corner of a building, but then breaking out with the house in the middle because this company doesn't just sell residential. They also do sell some commercial. Uh, so uh, talking about the actual physical pieces of, of the logo, the cornerstone font is Times New Roman, which I would believe most of us have. Uh, and that is the bold. And I'm also going to talk about the fact that you see how everything is capital on here. You have the C. Everything is capital, but the C and the S are bigger caps. That's actual. This is an actual something called small caps I'm going to talk about, which you've seen many times where normally the first letter will be capital and the last letter will be capital just to kind of condense things or contain things. But the C and the S being like that, it allows you to do two things. It allows you to keep everything the same color blue and separate the two words because there's no space between the R and the S. It literally goes right into the next word and you're not reading it uh, as one word. You're reading it knowing it's two words even though it's the same color. That's the first thing. The second thing it's doing is it is giving you an area to throw this logo in. All right. Um, what I did with the logo is I actually, it's a little bit off centered in this area and purposely so because I wanted to make sure it didn't look funny over the N because the N is very much like a box and this is very much like a box over it so it's just one of those you know little things nobody the world isn't going to notice it but you're going to notice it and you know it's just these little details that you just want to get really good at refining uh be a little anal about it too so um the other part is that the uh, s actually breaks up this area so you can put the rest of the logo which it is the support corp i decided to put it in all in lowercase uh because it looked funny with uh, anything capital in there to be honest with you and um this logo is made up of two different colors where they actually grade it into each other right here so you're not gonna have problems with uh you know printing uh you're gonna you, you know be able this logo looks great as a two color job basically, which is going to save people money on screen printing and stuff like that. Also, this logo, as you can see, it looks really awesome in black and white. So it's one of those logos that it's not going to change and lose details if you scan it and put it, you know, through the fax machine and all that. And uh, so that's it. So let, let's get into Adobe Illustrator CC 2014 in the comments below. Let me know if you noticed anything I didn't. Um, I did design it, but there might be something you see that you want to point out. So uh, let's hear it. But Let's get into it. Okay, so now we are in Adobe Illustrator CC 2014. Finally, we can get to the tutorial. No, but I think it's important to really talk about everything because there's more to the, than just designing a logo than actually just using the pen tool and all that. But you can really uh, use any of the el illustrators prior to this. So CS2 and up, you should be fine with everything. Um, I am working on an 8.5.11 canvas right now. So just to kind of get the scale that I am working with, you're going to see the two colors that I am using, so you can search for them and add them to your swatches. But the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit T on our T keyboard or come up here to the Type Tool, Text Tool, 
click and we're going to type out the word corner stone we're now going to hit escape because that's how you're going to end your selection we're going to come into the character palette and we are going to well excuse me if you notice i made sure this whole font was lowercase for a reason because we're now going to come into our character and we're going to come up into the extra options and we're going to type uh, we're going to click on small caps and small caps is basically going to take take our font even though it's lowercase it's going to make it all caps all right and what that's going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to when we come in here to make a capital like we would normally do like when starting a sentence it's going to make it bigger than the other caps so we're going to select the c we're going to hit shift and then the letter c and then we're going to hit shift s just like i said like when you start a sentence when you have that first word the letter of the first word that is going to be capital we are now going to hit escape and that is going to end that selection pretty easy right now we're going to select cornerstone and we are going to change it to this blue all right this tutorial is going to be quicker than my my critique of it but basically what we're now going to do is we're going to hit the text tool and we're going to make another little text box we're going to type out support p-o-r-t corp and then we're going to hit escape. Now, if you notice, I'm still in small caps. So once you do it in a document, it's going to continually make everything small caps unless you turn it off. So you got to come into your t character palette, come in here, click small caps. And we're going to now change this to Myriad Pro. Uh, you can use Helvetica. You can also use Arial and then do a slant on it because Arial, oh no, Arial does have it uh, in italics. And we're going to scale that down a little bit. I'm now going to put this in the light blue. And if you notice what I did was, all right, you notice how I put spacing between each letter. I did that because this looks funny to me. It doesn't look right. It's also, it's too big and it's too close together. So what I did was I scaled this down. So I'm gonna hit shift while I scale this down. Uh, all right, I didn't line it up with the edge of the T because I guess I wanted it to float a little bit away from that S right there. And we're gonna come into character, come to the tracking, and literally we're just gonna add tracking and see what comes up. All right, cool. So I added about 217 tracking, um, and I think it looks pretty right. And then I lifted a little above so you wouldn't get it lost. I mean, you can argue, yes, this should be close to the word tone, um, but then it kind of blends in a little bit. I don't know. But um, that's how I decided to do it in that case. What we're now going to do is we are going to draw this little house shape, this corner stone with a house breaking out of it. So what we're going to do is we are, uh, we could do this a number of ways, but what I would like to do is I would like to make a rectangle. Why not? Because we could use a Pathfinder tool also. All right, so we're going to make a little rectangle and we're going to hit E on our keyboard to mess around with it we're now going to pull this hold shift because you're going to feel it snap into place and i'm going to move it over here what i now want to do is i want to take a rectangle and there are many ways of doing the same thing in illustrator but i'm showing you a different way uh we're going to put that rectangle over that and the only way you're going to know it's over is if you fill it with another color so you're going to see the red rectangle is over the blue uh of, of the blue square so we're now going to select both of these come into your pathfinder tool and you're going to hit minus front. All right, so now it makes a triangle. You can literally also do the same thing by hitting the pe clicking the pen tool, going one, holding shift, two, three. But now you have to you know pull this down and make sure it's it's aligned. So I'm going to delete that. What I now want to do is I'm just going to hover over here, just to get the right um, the right scaling. So what we're now going to do is we're going to hit A on our keyboard. We're going to click on that endpoint, and we're going to hold. We're gonna hold shift, excuse me, and then click on it till it turns white. And now we can select it. We're going to pull this baby down and hold shift while you do it so it doesn't move to the left or to the right. And let's see, okay, it's too far down. We're gonna move a little bit higher up. I'm now gonna move the triangle over here because it's basically what we need. All right, the very next thing we're gonna do is we're going to make the triangle the this area that is above that. And what we're gonna do here is we're going to go to option click, we're gonna Click this right here, okay? And we are now going to, basically we copied it. We're gonna copy it again, all right? And we're gonna just copy it a little bit further down. And we're going to do the same thing. Select both, come into Pathfinder, minus the front. What we're now gonna do is hit the minus sign on the keyboard, and we're gonna click this point right here, and we're gonna click this point right here. It's gonna delete those points, so it's gonna make our shape like so, all right? I'm now gonna come in here, Pull that down a little bit, and you're going to notice that 
obviously we don't have the same angle going on and that's okay because we're going to fix that we're now going to hit a on our keyboard we're going to hover over this point we're going to hold shift we're now going to hover over this point and you're literally just going to hit the down arrow two three four five six depending on your scaling you might need to hit it a little couple more times hit it about eight times um, you can also now click these and move them whichever way you want but then again you gotta hold shift while you're doing it so you don't screw up anything all right, cool. So now we have our main shape with the shape that is on top of it. What I now want to do is I want to zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna take a rectangle and I'm going to make that rectangle go down the entire piece right in the middle, okay? And what you could do is you could select all three of these elements to make sure everything is, is perfect on the dot and you wanna hit horizontal, align, center point, so all three elements align. And you wanna now select both of these elements again pathfinder best tool you could use for logos not best tool one of the best uh minus front boom now it what it did was it broke that up into one two all right we are going to fill the right one with that lighter blue oh it is already and we're gonna fill the left one with that darker blue all right what we're now going to do is we are going to basically make that house up there so we're going to make a, a, a square right here and we're just gonna center that by eye right there. We're gonna fill it with white. We're going to option click. We're gonna basically shift that up right there. We're gonna zoom in and we're gonna make a point right in the middle by hitting the plus sign on the keyboard, clicking right here and then hitting minus sign and then boom, boom. Cutting those two points out. We're now gonna hit A on our keyboard, click this point right here and we're gonna pull it down to be the top of the house, okay? All right, I'm now gonna Pull this down just a little bit because I want these to overlap or touch each other because we're going to have to combine them in a second. Move these both over till they're centered. All right, lastly, we're going to create this little chimney. All right, so we're just going to make another little rectangle that comes out right here. Let's see if that adheres to what I did before. Oh, the chimney was a little bigger before. So let's just do this. Cool, right? All right, so now we're going to say we're not clicked on anything. We're going to click. Now hold shift, click again, and hold shift, click the last one. We're going to go to the Pathfinder and hit Unite, and now we have our house. All right, our house is a little bit taller, but that's okay because all houses are different. Uh, but we're going to hit E on our keyboard right now. I'm going to actually stretch it down. I don't like stretching things, but it's just for the purpose of the tutorial. Um, I'm now going to hit A on my keyboard, select this line segment, pull it out. Actually, that's not going to work because it's going to distort it. So we're going to... Just squeeze this thing a little bit. Like I said, I don't like doing that, but for the purpose of this, it still looks like the good house that I need in there. Now that this is one shape, and you can see it's one shape, but if I fill it with red, I'm going to take this shape, and first of all, I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna make sure of something. I'm now gonna select all three elements. I'm gonna use the Pathfinder again on them. All right, so this happens sometimes. Let's ungroup this and see if it works. Okay, so select the house and copy it. I'm now going to select just the house and this right triangle. We're going to hit minus front. I'm now going to go to object or edit, paste in front. Okay, it's going to paste it right back where it was. I'm now going to hold shift and click the left one and I'm going to do minus front. So now, if I put a box behind this and fill it with the color, you're going to see everything is cut out to where I want it to be. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come into here. I'm going to literally click my gradient tool all right so my gradient goes from the light blue to the dark blue um and then you can mess with this gradient sliders like so um i, I kept it uniform where i kept the same dark blue on the left fading to the same light blue on the right as it is in the shape right here so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this we're going to hit command g to group it and we're going to center this again over the n all right, we're going to hit E on our keyboard to scale this up just a little bit to where you feel like it, it is supposed to go where you want it to be. And let me just make sure. Yeah, see, this house is a little bit taller, but that's okay because when you're designing logos, I always talk about it. It's all about refining. There's so much time in refining. I don't suggest refining before the client gives you the okay on it because then you're doing all this extra work on all the versions of the logo for you know, no reason you're wasting time. So, um, 
The last thing I might do is I might come into stone and he'll hold option and knock this in a little bit, pull it in a little bit more. Um, I just noticed that. All right, so we are done with this logo in Adobe Illustrator. All right, so first and foremost, thank you for checking out this video. In the comment section below, let me know what you thought of the video, what you thought of the logo, uh, and whatever comments or, or input you have, that'd be great. Uh, please share it out on your social networks. A lot of work's going into this series. And don't forget about the extended version. Definitely look into it, think about it. It's definitely gonna be worth it. Uh, if you wanna learn how to make thousands of dollars a month designing logos, uh, it's definitely something you want to uh, check out. And uh, that's it, everybody. So I will see you for the next professional logo design tutorial. Have a great night. Peace.